Hey, welcome back to the only channel bringing you BMET tips and tricks to make it through the schoolhouse. In class, we covered relays, solenoid control valves, and transformers. Transformers, roll out. A relay is a device that uses electromagnetism to open or close a group of switches. Essentially, this is an electronically controlled switch. Have you ever wondered how your turn signals in your vehicle work? If it were a normal switch, you'd have to flip a physical switch each time to get the blinker to flash on and off. With the relay, along with other circuitry inside of the vehicle, the turn signal relay is given a signal to energize and this action allows the light in your turn signal to flash on and off. There are multiple parts to a relay. Remember that relays are typically drawn in the de-energized state. The normally closed contacts are touching the common contacts. A magnetic core is utilized to develop a magnetic field. That allows the armature to be pulled into the normally open contacts and allows current to flow from the common contact through the normally open contact. This passes a signal or current we need elsewhere in the circuit. A spring is utilized to return the common contact to the de-energized state. Relays are represented on schematics using the letter K and are drawn in the de-energized state. The most common relays are the power relay and the control relay. A power relay is utilized to apply power to a circuit and is comprised of a coil and a single pole single throw switch. A control relay is utilized to direct signal flow to other parts of a circuit. Control relays are comprised of a coil plus any switch combination greater than a single pole single throw. We learn that solenoid control valves are used to convert electrical current to mechanical motion. This device uses electromagnetism to open or close a valve. The valve is comprised of a magnetic core or the coil, a plunger and a spring. When an electric current is passed through the coil, a magnetic field is generated and the plunger is pulled in. When the current is removed, the solenoid is returned to its de-energized state by the spring. The last topic that we will cover is going to be transformers. A transformer is a device that is used to transfer power through mutual induction created by electromagnetism. They are represented on a schematic by the letter T. The primary side is where our transformer gets its power from. The secondary side is used to develop a new voltage that can be utilized by a circuit. In a perfect world, power in would equal power out, but because of the laws of physics and impurities in the manufacturing process, some losses are seen. Copper loss occurs when current flows through the windings which have inherent resistance, causing power to be consumed in the form of heat. What are the windings made out of? If you guess copper, you'd be right. Eddy current loss occurs when there are fluctuations of the magnetic field that cause random currents in the iron core. If you happen to watch the cartoon Ed, Ed, and Eddie as a kid, you know that they did a lot of random things. This is a super simple way to remember this type of loss. If someone is always changing their mood, you could say that they're hysterical. Now in a transformer, hysteresis loss occurs because of the magnetic field changing directions. Now to move on to the fundamentals of a transformer. There are a few fundamentals that we need to consider when determining the type of transformer that is in our circuit. First is going to be the core type. Iron cores are used in power supplies, whereas air core and ferrite transformers are used in radio frequency circuits. The next is the voltage ratio. There are three types. A step up transformer will increase or step up the voltage seen on the secondary. A step down will decrease or step down the voltage on the secondary. And lastly, a balanced transformer will have equal primary and equal secondary. Later in this course, you will utilize phase inversion to develop a voltage later on in the circuit. We can see phase inversion represented by the phase dots. If the phase dots are both on the top of the primary and the secondary, they will be in phase. If one phase dot is on top of the primary and the other phase dot is on the bottom of the secondary, we can say that the transformer has phase inversion. To perform transformer calculations, utilize table 16 on your formula chart. We start off by using our number of windings to find the secondary voltage. Here we have 5 windings multiplied by 100 volts and then divide by 3. This gives us a secondary voltage of 166.67 volts. Now that we have our secondary voltage, we can solve for current just like we would in a series circuit. Secondary voltage, 166.67 volts divided by the total resistance of the secondary or 15 K ohms. This gives us a secondary current of 11.11 .11 milliamps of current. Our last step now is to find the primary current. 
We can use the number of turns of the primary, 5, times secondary current, 11.11 .11 milliamps, divided by the number of turns of the primary, 3. This gives a solution of 18.52 milliamps of current through the primary transformer. Alrighty guys, today we covered relay fundamentals, solenoid control valves, and transformer fundamentals. If you like this video, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more BMET tips and tricks. And as always, stay classy and keep your head up.